We are live! Welcome to Anima Beyond Fantasy. It's been a really busy, busy last like week for me. So I might be a little low energy. I just had a wedding I went to after making two videos. Uh, by the way, if you're interested, there's a video coming out tomorrow of the one year anniversary of Bad Luck Gamer. Many of my many of the people on my Discord have already You're, seen it. Uh, Mike's popping. It's popping. Or at least it's for me. It is, yeah. It, it crackles a little bit. I don't know. While you fix that, though, uh, the update from the Saturday game is uh, nobody died because the dragon wasn't a real dragon. Oh, thank goodness. His name is still Darniel, though, courtesy of Alex. Yeah. <laughs> Not at all. I don't know if I heard it on the stream either that's the other thing like I, I was listening to it on the, I was doing an audio check and I didn't I don't think I heard the pops or I didn't notice it nope good old microphone setups it could be so finicky It was in mute. <laughs> Whatever. Can you hear me though? Yeah. Well, I turned off voice mod, so no voices. Is it still popping? Can you? Is nope. there any crackle? Should be good, and you don't need voice mod on because you shouldn't be doing any fucked up voices today. I hope you're not. With you guys, I'm never sure. That's. Fair. Fair. Considering we, we have a think... walking uh, new moon requirement for uh, voices. Yeah. Or we might just see something in the horizon go that looks big. A little yeah. scary. Anyway, I think it was just a Discord thing. Discord Discord has a rough time. It's been having a rough time lately, it seems. I figured out why my computer, why my Discord was randomly uh, just kicking me out. Was I needed to restart my computer. Oh. I don't know why, but that was just the requirement. That's strange. Man, that stream's off to a good start. Anyway, uh, anniversary video tomorrow. Tomorrow's the one year anniversary of, uh, you know, when I really started digging my heels in Bella Gamer. Uh, those on our Discord have gotten a link to see it ahead of time. And I've gotten some good reviews so far, so that's been great. Uh, <clears throat> so come on over to the Battle of Gamer Discord if you want to hear it early. Uh, we're also almost at 100 subscribers. Holy shit. In the last month, I've gotten 50 subscribers. The channel's literally doubled in size in one month. And uh, I'm just afraid that it's going to keep ramping up and I don't know what I'm gonna do with it so I might have to make another video this week it'll be three videos in one week yay you can't the, 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 the chat does not properly transmit my pain but yeah so when that happens I'll make a video for that I'm tired already thinking about it uh, also this week we have a really fun table talk we're gonna be talking about the new guns and gears book which is coming out on wednesday so if you want you want to talk about guns and fantasy we're gonna be doing that on thursday it's gonna be a great time i'm debating whether to release my champion video for my uh 
why this class is awesome or to do a uh, a a manic manic panicked version of like a 20 minute breakdown of the new book we'll see we'll see how feisty i'm feeling on wednesday because i probably should do a video on the new book but i don't want to do it like everyone else is doing it who are doing like full reviews so i'm just gonna do a no breaths taken 20 minute video on <laughs> why the book is good and what's in it book in a nutshell speed run yeah. If I breathe, the video ends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. For real. Uh, Just have Devin stand behind you with the timer. If you take too long to breathe, over. He's just going to have an oxygen mask ready for when I pass out. A noble sacrifice for the content. Uh, that's another thing as well as uh, the debate on whether I should do another video during the week or not. Because I think two videos a week is optimal for the channel, but I don't know if it's optimal for my life. I mean, if you do one guaranteed and every now and then you're like, oh, surprise, the second one. Yeah, yeah the, the thing is, is just more videos means more people coming in, which means more subscribers. So if I do it, it will just accelerate things. So long as you're not going to burn yourself out, because if you burn yourself out too hard and go three months without videos, what's that then? That's fair. It's it, it's it's the the internal argument I've been having, because I also don't want to give up my games, because that's the whole reason why I'm doing this. An important thing to think is if if it were a content creator that you love, which would you prefer them to do? As much as you want the two videos a week, you're like, okay, See, if it's killing them, please please do one and occasionally surprise us with two. But I have to think on the wavelength of the internet at large, which is, I don't care about you, fucking bring me more videos. Oh, you don't want those people. They're the ones who pay the most money, surprisingly. The Minecraft like, literally... YouTube community would disagree. Come on, but video so man, bring me so the content. Dance, internet man. Dance, internet Jables monkey, coins. dance. We'll see. But it's been exciting. And now that we're going to hit 100 subscribers, we're going to get even more views. The Bard video has been getting still more and more views every time I look at it. Let me let me, let me, me look at my numbers right now. That's because, like have you considered Bard's fuck? Yeah. Bard's fuck, that's why I made a pixelated dick on him. Sometimes you just got to do that for the content. Let's see here. Bard has hit over a 600 views now that it was literally like 20 away when I looked earlier today. Holy fuck. And Cleric has been getting shit tons of views too. That's because everybody else in a party has chosen and somebody's like, God damn it, I gotta be a healer. Right. The new Oracle better. video has been doing really well, as well. Because people don't know what the fuck Oracle can do. Like, I'll yeah. finally... Like, and then me. I'm like, Oracle's the best caster. Come fight me in the thumbnail. It's great. Oracle can do some really, really lit stuff. Oracle is perfect if you love playing with a handicap on your character and making the best out of it. So... Uh, we even got almost 50 people watch who have watched our session zero for our Friday game, which is nuts for a two and a half hour video. So yeah, the channel's been doing really, really well. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to continue this journey with everyone and I recommend everyone go and watch the video tomorrow as I kind of give my, uh, my thanks for everything. Granted, you could probably just wait a week and the 100 subscriber video will also be like, thank you all so much for being here. I can't do this without you. I say it in a mocking tone only because I know I'm going to have to make a better video than just that, but those that's what's going to break down too. Anyway, we're here to play Anima, right? I'm pretty sure that's why we all came today. Oh, I thought we were here for Alex's birthday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's the Glue Boy's time. birthday. So if anyone watches this video, post the fact. Type in the comments. Happy birthday, Glue Boy. 
and I'll, I'll, I'll check back every few days just to see how it goes. Just just look at that smile. Doesn't even realize he's one year closer to death. <laughs> I'm now I'm now an adult. I, I walked the the alcohol section of Safeway without like feeling weird, you know. It's interesting. It's also very expensive. <laughs> I was like, I can't afford this. I'll be right back. Hold on. So I left. Oh man, you are an adult. <laughs> you discovered it. <laughs> Instead of the interaction in video games that you normally see where, like, I can't do that. Here you go, I can't afford this. I, can't I, can't afford I was like, that's a lot of money. I was like, oh, yeah, maybe I'll grab, like, a few bottles of something, like, stuff to make cocktails. And I, I look at them, like, this is a lot of money. I'm not doing this. I've been very blessed. At every introduction I have had to either smoking or drinking, other people have footed the bill. Yeah, I'm just going to mooch off everyone. That's all I learned. I can That's what you do for your 21st everyone. birthday. Yeah. You just make other people buy you alcohol so you can get shwasted. That's what I'm doing next weekend. I'm, I'm, I'm fucking mooching off both my brother, uh, my brother and my parents. I'm just gonna like, oh yeah, yeah, you pay for this. Oh yeah, I have a terrible, well, I've been told it's a terrible tasting IPA in my fridge. I got it in my bachelor's basket for the wedding. And everyone, all of them said it tastes terrible, so I have to drink it and suffer with them. But I've just been so tired, and I'm just like, I don't want to do that today. Uh, so it's going to sit in the fridge for a bit until I finally actually drink it and be like, uh, why? Or maybe, maybe I'll go drink like a couple Four Locos and then drink it. So I'll be too drunk to taste it. It's always that. It's tempting. I don't like drinking. I'm not a drinking kind of person. At the wedding, so many people got drunk, and I was just like, y'all are lightweights, you got drunk on like 7% champagne. It has to be a very specific environment, you know? And also, yeah, I agree, I'm not a big fan of doing that, like, often. It's like a once a month, if that, I'm like, yeah. Mine's fine. like once a year kind of deal, like, I, well one, it takes more for me to get drunk than your average person apparently because well, i can't get drunk on champagne it's like impossible the big but, thing is i'm in college so but alex how would you know that hypothetically in a video game you just outed yeah. yourself live <laughs> it's just like a once a month thing that i do it's like did you just turn 21 <laughs> uh it's I, I was talking in gta like I would never, I would never break break the law in real life. No, no. <laughs> oh yes, I also got a flask with my initial nice. on it. That's very so. cool. That's pretty sweet. Huh. It was actually funny when you saw the funnel for it and didn't realize what it was for. It came with a hat. Actually, it looks like you could s screw it on and then, like, attach one of those rubber uh, uh, tops to, like, a baby bottle or whatever. I don't know why I, oh, like, yeah. never... It's a no-spill flask! I don't know why I never <laughs> realized, like, you know, you need a funnel to fill up a flask. I, 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 you know, that makes sense. I never thought about it. Yeah, I mean, in GTA, <laughs> it's always just... Yeah, auto. it's... You kind of just, like, you kind of just, like, aim. You know, you gotta kind of figure it out. Once you know how, like, the fluid dynamics work in GTA, it works just fine. It's so interactive with the the whole alcohol aspect of GTA. It's a lot deeper. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised at this point, considering, uh, like, the GTA roleplay scene is apparently really big. Oh, yeah. True. It always just looked like the Gary's mod shit I would poke my head into, think people were just losers because it's like they're taking this very seriously and i'd leave i just wanted to play like G like basically half-life with a bunch of people and like like uh play like pvp but no everyone was always like this is my business uh uh rdm rdm and i thought they were, oh, everything was lame so it's left <laughs> like each time i also got a knife nice how it it it's such a weird bachelor's basket because it's kind of like the frat boy 
like alcohol, knives, a flask, all that kind of stuff. That, but that like happens. everyone in the bachelor in, of the groomsmen are just the nerdiest like dorks that just play like Super Smash all the time. Like <laughs> honestly though, having a good knife with you at least like having a good one is like indispensable. True. It is a really handy thing just have a good quality knife with you. Cuz like it comes up and then when it comes up you're like, "Oh, thank God I have this." I do miss the times that I used to just be able to carry around like a pocket knife with me I like at all times. Yeah. I mean, I got a I actually have a nice like pocket knife, like um uh, a camping knife basically. It's it's very handy and it's something that like whenever I need I'm like, "Oh shit." I've ran into the need to cut up boxes more often than I ran into the need for most of my education from school. Yeah. I don't know. I never ran into any of these situations. I mean, to be the fair, thing... I just punch through the tape for boxes and have to break them down. So The only thing I've ever really needed to do was have a bottle opener. And that's just because I don't feel like scuffing my hand up to open up a bottle. Same. I can like 50% of the time... Or destroying a table. I can like 50% of the time pop it off with my hand. Not guaranteed. With your soda bottle. Yeah, my soda bottles. Actually, th that is genuinely do is what I, I mean. mean. Yeah. Actually, I, I do drink a lot of bottles. I think before. most alcohol have like twist tops. Yeah. Well, some, and most are in cans nowadays, anyways. Yeah. Because uh, any any uh, alcohol like company is actually putting all their money into seltzers because they don't have to pay the alcohol tax. Right. Yeah. What has Vale been doing? Uh. Aren't we supposed to get started? What the hell? Oh. I guess we did go off on a tangent, to be fair. Well, yeah, and then it's just like one moment, and it's like, okay, I guess we'll just keep filling the air. And then Vale's just been gone. Hope everything's alright. Yeah. It's okay, we got Sleepy Kitty Cam. Yeah. I'm so excited for that Guns and Gears book, though. I'm excited to research it on Wednesday so I can actually, like, bring stuff up on Thursday. Because I'm, I'm going to fucking go. Wednesday's gonna, gonna Wednesday is going to suck it. so bad. I got to make a whole video on Wednesday and read the book at the same day. Like, my, my, my time to edit a video was Friday, but that's taken. So now it's Wednesday. So it's like Wednesday and Thursday is just all my my time oh god it's gonna be rough let's we'll see how fast the store gets the book too well i'm probably just gonna get out on roll 20 regardless because we it'll be very handy to have it on roll 20. true and then doing that i'll get the pdf from paizo so but when i get a thousand subscribers then i'll get review copies hell yeah and then i still gotta buy it on roll 20 anyway <laughs> watch the guns take like two two actions to reload or something like that i hope not no um I don't remember they, they had like the mechanic they had the mechanics for the guns in the gunslinger like uh play test and i think they're keeping the guns more or less the same just gotta invent a magazine <laughs> Well, I guess while Vale's gone, I can always look it up. That's true.
Sorry, I had to help with stuff. I'm back. Welcome back. We're discovering uh, very in-depth uh, GTA alcohol mechanics with Alex. Well, I mean, there's nothing more interesting that I could come back to than, like, the Deadlands conversations. Though Anima does occasionally produce the Deadlands conversations. <laughs> That's fair. At what point was this technology available? When what did people know made? about cells? I never thought I'd hate a game the more I got closer to real life. <laughs> God, that was one of the best parts of Deadlands. It <laughs> was it. Hold up, I'm just hold up. there. What is steak sauce created? <laughs> Trying to fucking tell a description of a city you guys are like, oh, let's go to a restaurant. And I'm like, okay, sure. And then like, when was ketchup invented? And it's just like, God damn it. <laughs> I'm just gonna start looking it up. <laughs> it spirals every oh, time. It's all a lot older than you think it would be. <laughs> or younger than you think it would be. It depends. It's really a hit or a miss on some I stuff. I remember being surprised by like the majority of the stuff you brought up. Oh, we were definitely surprised at the age of some restaurants that we know. Yeah. True. America just exists in this weird place time wise because it's so young that like in comparison like 200 years is ancient to us but it's like well one of the and then you find out oh yeah no this popular restaurant chain it's very first iteration is about uh 85 years old and you're like huh i mean i guess oh and this one's about 120 you're like what the fuck do you mean? So guns do have a reload. The reload one. Okay. So they're like the crossbow, equivalently. Yeah. At least in the playtest. They might have changed it. <laughs> anyway, alright, let's... <laughs> Almost an hour in, let's play some anima. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. Last time we left, we last left off. Uh, the Froscalier had their meeting. And the meeting mostly boiled down to you just don't know enough about the dragons right now. Their flight is one of the hardest things to take care of, but even in a more cramped space, they're breath attack is potentially lethal and without any proper good solutions nothing has been decided as far as attacking the dragons though the king of Hoffman did say that there were some issues with the schooling as they were uh, attacking some of their supplies that have been coming from Mullenhain. <clears throat> and so, uh, Alexi, with the supervision of the, the Grey Wolf Mimir, and the up-and-coming, uh, Goodness, what was her name? Ursula. Ursula, that's right. Uh, offered to to go in aid to possibly deal with the schooling threats, and uh, considering the schooling are so closely related to the uh, the devourer. They figured at least they would maybe know something more about these dragons if they weren't just straight up connected. So, that being the case, you're all kind of getting together, getting ready to take your journey. You uh, took some days to 
asked some questions of the walking stick, and Finwith had a uh, painfully nostalgic meetup with Verda. As uh, a question of what did the schooling schooling learn with the uh, learn from the dragons came up. And, and next time we're just gonna keep it simple and ask how best to ground a dragon. <laughs> and you've learned that the the the, the schooling are uh, school schooling it's very hard to say over and over and over the schooling uh have uh kind of drifted away from the true like message that the dragons departed onto them it wasn't it's not just about victory in battle it's about superiority over one's prey and environment and uh the songs and stories of great battles and raiding kind of overtook the desire for improving one's craft and bettering one's hunt. And that ultimately led to the, the skewlings uh, downfall as they uh, they took on prey too great for themselves and ended up crashing and burning just as you're all getting ready to begin this journey you all have a dream a very realistic dream of a castle over a lake ominously hanging over a literal endless army of walking undead all pale as snow and as y'all woke to what you thought was the waking world and it may still be true out your window in the distance pulses of ominous energy emanated through the ever wintry landscape of Hoffman and so you have all awakened somewhat earlier than normal the snowy <clears throat> early morning air is just barely being illuminated from over the horizon and you're all free to either head back to sleep or to do something else Sebastian would try to figure out if there's anything else that's a little off like um, if there's any other differences between like uh, yesterday and like now try to notice any discrepancies in what way uh, like looking out the window uh, does he notice anything else that's like overtly like because uh, giving away like oh this is just some weird wake like a uh, nightmare you have some weird lucid dream or is this a uh, like real life if you're trying to determine whether this is real life or not uh easy enough you conjure up some electricity and lightly shock yourself enough to stimulate mm. it tingles and it doesn't feel great Granted, it's probably better than pinching yourself or slapping yourself. Uh, but you feel the pain is real, so... That much at least can be verified. 
other than that looking out you just see foggy snowy you know morning air in a sense it's still rather dark outside you can it's just this the the surrounding sky is just barely turning a light shine or a slightly less dark shade of gray as it were Oh boy, Fredboat, you're having a time, aren't you? That's what happens when uh, Discord kills everybody else and Fredboat alone is left to uh, hold the tide. We're gonna turn that down until Fredboat decides to start behaving and not go all robotic on me. Yeah, definitely a lot of people using it, like, was not made for that many servers, like, to use. And we're still feeling the pulse at certain intervals. How is there a big time difference between the pulses if we feel it? Uh, it was just the one pulse. Everyone seemed to be awake and you saw literally a, a dark energy emanate from somewhere out in the out in the out in the storm. Great news. I got salt. We're safe. Can I try to use navigation to guess the general direction it's coming from? Uh, yes, actually, that's exactly what that's for. I wonder if it's from like a certain lake, Goldar. Plot that twist is... from the other side of the continent. He's just fucking with us. That is a 120 navigation. It was in okay. the Desert of Destiny or whatever the whole time. You probably couldn't pinpoint the source, but you do know that it emanated somewhere just south of uh, southwest from your location. And that coincides with the location Olin gave us. Yes. Yes. Okay. Anastasia goes to Fimlet's store. Mm -hmm. After a moment, shuffling whips open. I'm probably going crazy, but I had the strangest dream. Uh, no. I did too. Well, I mean, I'm sure it... Was it kind of creepy with uh, all of the um, frostbitten? Yeah. And a castle. Weird, like, uh, he just kind of like reaches out and just like lightly like wraps knuckles against your sternum. It's like the pulse. Yeah. Okay, no, we did have this set. Do you think was... everybody had that? Or, like, does he somehow know that we're coming after him? I don't know. It is coming from the same direction Olin said it was. Well, I was hoping it wasn't coming from um, the uh, different looking place. The different castle that was in the uh, moth. No. We do keep running into weird things, though, so it could be something else, but there was a lot of undead, so I assumed it was that. I have a question. Is, is Sebastian's room southwest from Anastasia's room in any way? You all face, like, the same direction-ish, so... I not, didn't not just put out, a, put out a telekinetic pulse for fun. <laughs> he had that bad of a dream. Uh, at this point, too, Sebastian's, like, walking out of his room, too. Somebody touched him with their tongue. Like, right on, like, the back of his neck. He was so repulsed in the nightmare, he, uh, like, repulsed all of us. I do I have do to also say, the undead that you saw were not frostbitten. Or at least not the ones you came across. They looked much more formidable. Hmm. Yeah, she's the first where he'd go for 
formidable in this group translates to if it moves, we can hit it. How big just means how fun of a shape do I need? Alright, well, um, unless we wanted to try and get any more sleep, I guess we should get up and get ready. Probably. Gonna continue pursuing the dragons, or are we gonna try and follow this? I don't know if we can get there fast enough, though, but we don't have... Olin. It's not like he's going to die anytime soon. And he just kind of, like, reaches out and, like, <laughs> grabs you and, like, picks you up slightly and sets you to the side so you can walk out of the door. It goes and uh, knocks on both Ale uh, Alexi and Sebastian's door. He's already, like, walking out, like, oh, okay. towards you all, too. Like, if anything, this just means we have a time limit. It means we should handle Haringham soon. As this is happening, does looking in the direction of the pulse look weirder with the spectacles, or is it pretty much the same? Uh, it was the same. Nothing. Did okay. you see anything to the spectacles with the pulse? Since you apparently sleep in your fucking glasses, you freak of nature. <laughs> that was established. <laughs> that was established. That was established last se last session. Uh, which, by the way, I have no idea how you could even do that. But um, no, it, no turning it was. Ever. If anything, it was a supernatural force that was visible to anyone. Okay. Big flux. But a the... bunch of really upset inquisitors <laughs> south of uh, Goldar. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> uh, actually, maybe not, actually. We did kick him out at one point. That's why I said south of Goldar. There are still principalities owned by the Empire there. Mm. True. But, uh, uh, Alexi goes and opens the door. He's like, ah, I see that you, uh, have probably also felt the, uh, thing that just happened. Oh, yeah, yeah, everybody did. Weird. Hmm. I wonder, though, if, if other people could also feel it, and it also happened, or if it was just us, because we're going to go, um, fuck him up. We can always ask those two Frost Collier that's traveling with us later. That is too. You don't think that it was, uh, part of Hringham, do you? Oh no, I definitely think that. There's okay. a bunch of undead things, a uh, big castle, creepy thing. Oh. Hey, seems about right. Hmm. Those that came from the same direction he's supposed to be. Yeah, that help. Uh, that help make me think it definitely was. Because we have, we do keep running into weird places like the uh, prison and uh, well, everything in the forest of Gehenna. But I think it's freeing them. I would be afraid that it was him being on the move, but we have not been talk contacted by Golan, so maybe not. Maybe it was uh, something else. Then at the very least, we should try to be there next month. Clearly he wants to fight us too, so we should go uh, deal with things here and then go. Uh, it, while it has not been expressly mentioned, traveling on foot towards Molenheim and to the double blind, uh, the tr double blind bends where you're supposed to be intercepting these, uh, schooling will take you about three months. Okay. Well, <laughs> Sebastian just uh, said yeah. we should try to be there next month. You're right. Oh, okay. And uh, that's not happening if you're planning on continuing as you are. Yeah. Then he instead it's he just we should try to be there as soon as possible. Feel better if we can make the first move. I think him doing that was the first move, but it wasn't a very. Um, Big one. It didn't do anything. We think. 
Could I try a insight check for the dream to see if it was just a standard invitation or if it seemed like it was a more pressing request? Sure. You can try to interpret the dream's meaning. I would like to insight my nightmare. <laughs> hey, it comes from someone subconscious anyway, so. Yeah. I say it's a good use of insight. Hit. I'll just say no. Because that is a 29, uh, 49. <laughs> no, yeah, unfortunately. Uh, you just feel like it's some kind of ill omen. I mean, the world's going to end in, uh, what, like 20 something, maybe more years? So. Either if we make it a bit easier now, or just deal with it then. So, uh, hopefully, he kind of stays around his castle and doesn't mess with people nearby. Not sure how likely that is. But if we leave the dragons and the schooling, then people will get hurt up here. If we leave him down there, people might get hurt there. So, we finish here, go straight there. Agreed. Then we just camp out and wait for his next invitation? No, we go knock on the door. And then kick in. Maybe that was his, uh, uh, because I think I vaguely remember, uh, maybe that was the once a month that he, uh, the place is accessible. Yeah, but it's never done that um, creepy dream thing. It's here, like knocks his uh, knuckles lightly into Alexi's chest too. Hmm. You've lived here for more than a month, and you know it hasn't happened before. So that's fair. So must be something special. Maybe this time it is not just the one time a month. Maybe this time he stays. That's what the other one and Gehenna is trying to do. That is true. Maybe they are doing it everywhere. Lots of things like that. But, um, should we go ahead and get ready and go? On the way, if any of you want questions asked um, more about the dragons or about Brigham, I can use the stick for that too. Maybe ask, um, how other fights into the castle have gone. Could be good information to have, yeah. Just think of how you want it asked. But yes, let us uh, set up and see that the others are ready too. All right, then. And Anastasia goes back into his room to get ready. So I have to adjust the calendar. It's been a minute. Go fetch his things. Comes back out fully decked out. <laughs> From the open door for Finless Room here. Anastasia, do you um, want me to braid your hair before we go? There's like a pause before he looks back at you. Sure. Uh, you can see if it's better under your helmet. Shrugs and like just walks over to you. But finishes gathering his things and then do up a uh, quick braid for him. Listen, you showed interest, and now it's a bonding activity. You don't have a choice. You've opted in, and there is no unsubscribe from this email. It's like partner grooming. Once you start, you'll never stop. And you all said the family word. It's over for all you fuckers. You said the F word. Family. 
Anyway, so, uh, you all take your time getting ready. It's getting to be more about closer to your normal waking time by the time you're all set to go. And, uh, I'm assuming you're gonna go head off and wake up or, uh, at least notify Mimir and, uh, Ursula that you're getting ready to go. For sure. Okay. As you kind of exit your hallway to kind of go around to one of the other uh, several branches of hallways that run through the mountain. I need something good before we go, too. You hear a very heated argument as uh, several of the Froskalier Soren, Ray, and Tor are having a heated discussion. And as you approach, you kind of get the gist of what they're saying. Unless you don't speak all the time or all. <clears throat> you guys had the dream too, right? That bastard is calling to us, the White King. Do you want a repeat of history, huh? Is he, you see Ray kind of getting up in uh, Soren's face. Soren just looks at him very stern, very reserved, and he's just like, We don't know what the dream means. And we currently have threats at doorstep. Ray. You mean to abandon our king to go off and fight some fairy tale? Tor standing next to them speaks up. We all know here that it's no f uh, <clears throat> it's no fairy tale. The White Knight happened in our history. Though I do agree that we shouldn't just run for the mountains just because some bad dream happens. And Race is like, Am I hearing you all correctly that you're scared? You don't want to go face one of the greatest threats known to our entire kingdom? Because you couldn't anticipate what the dream was about? Soren is just like, If the command comes, we will move out. If the armies come, we will fight. And that is all. The three begin bickering back and forth a little bit non-importantly uh, as you kind of oh, yeah. approach around. Oh, perfect. I love breaking into conversations. Oh, you all had the dream too? They all turn to you. Um, Ray looks at you all and he's just like, See, I bet even the newbie would understand. Cannot wait to fight Ringham. Alex, he shakes him. Alexi smiles. But uh, kind of takes on a more serious posture. Do we... Do understand the importance of it, but uh, we have decided to deal with the dragon problem first. Ray just looks like he's about to pull his hair out. As it's he... not sure uh, Hurigam's going to kill anyone yet, but sure dragons are going to kill people now. Eh, hey, what would some southern nobody know about it? Ah, uh, a couple of uh, shamans have gotten together. There is a plan to uh, try and kill Hringham. That's what Southerner knows about it. He grins. It is true. For all intents and purposes, because I'm not a big fan of it, he doesn't give you a chance to talk. Oh, he okay. interrupts okay. you before you can even say anything. Not Doing that kind of shit gives me an anxiety. So I'll No worries. If he doesn't, it. Finn with just kind of like quirks an eyebrow as if he thinks he's like, Oh, a big dominant guy. <laughs> he seems more amused by it. 
but uh yeah he he doesn't give you any kind of chance to give your side or anything mm -hmm. else like that it, it mostly just comes along of what do you know you're not frost collier yeah, you're probably one of those sculling beast fuckers anyway uh, uh can i have actually an advantage that if he brings up the sculling that anastasia could use i have the disquieting advantage yeah you yeah you can attempt to it's, 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 it's <laughs> ominous Phil was just like looks over to uh, Alexia. It's just, uh, do some of you get too much ice in the ears? Uh. <laughs> he doesn't really say anything. It's more of like, there's a definite like he knows the other Frost Killer aren't particularly proud of Ray, but know of his skill. Like he seems like he'd be good in the fight, but uh. He just kind of gestures over to him, ranting. It is... rough. Mood slightly wanna... soured by uh, the sculling mention. Did you want to uh, and try to intimidate Anasasi? Might as well. I don't have a high stat in it, but may as well try to go for it. Okay. Do that creepy centipede thing. That'll get him going. I don't think there's any here, but... You get some of those uh, fucked up bugs that, like, freeze themselves in ice. You just thaw them out like I'm skittering out. That's an 85. He did. You, you put on your best, you know, like... like but, unfortunately, I'm also behind armor, so that probably yeah, doesn't help yeah. me. For all intents and purposes, this would get you like up to the 120 mark, but it doesn't seem to perturb him. Particularly strong characters uh, won't be so easily put off. But uh, as like as it's becoming tense, as as Ray is getting like progressively more and more hostile and everything like that. Uh, there's a shift in a nearby hallway as you can hear the sound of like some fabric scraping against, against stone and this causes everyone to turn probably from a sense of tenseness and whatever this is just like a new element and you see uh, Mamir but this time He's not in his normal, like, Frost Collier outfit that you've seen before. Uh, instead, he is wearing a massive white pelt from a bear uh, of immense size. And he's got all of his gear on weapon. He looks like a veteran of the Winter Wastes covered like head to toe. Like god of war yeah pretty much like he he looks like he is ready for combat in a sense like he's not in his uh showman kind of uh, apparel but is instead ready to head out and you can see that he's got a multitude of weapons uh, either at his hip or on his back and he's carrying with him a rather large like sack made from some kind of pelt or another Finn with immediately looks like slightly like starry eyed at the pelt like ooh that must have been a really cool thing to like and whatever he has in his sack is incredibly heavy as he's kind of just uh, set it down and it made enough noise to gather everyone's attention. Everyone just kind of looks and he just lets out a sigh. You know, it's like it's like an anime where you just get like the the exasperated like whoosh, kind of uh, effect. And he's just like. Can't an old man get any sleep in here? As he hoists the sack up over his shoulder. You kids were being so loud I had to get up. 
earlier than normal. And he kind of teeters over. And he says, "Looks like you're ready, Roscalia." And kind of pats Alexi on the sh- on the chest. That we are. I was actually just coming to get you. Well, no need. And he turns to face down one of the uh, the hallways, and he inhales deeply. And it was shifts just so his ear isn't like facing him. In a voice much louder than your average person's, he barks down the hallway, and he's just like. Ursula, get out here! And it just, the whole place almost rumbles from the boom from his voice and everyone around uh, needs to make a a, a physical resistance check, please. His dad sneezes could topple mountains. (laughs) (gasps) I have the wrong dice. That's true. That's right. That's pretty good. Man, my dice hate me today. This is actually surprising. Jeez, Alexi. I mean, he has a 105 base, <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> this is N tier anima. Got these numbers. Someone, like, got KFC somewhere, because it just got a huge whiff of, like, fried chicken. It does kind of smell like it, don't it? I got some tacos, but... Yeah, no, it wouldn't have been that, because it just hit me now. But, like, the sliding glass door is closed. What the hell? Probably somebody downstairs and it went through the ventilation or something. Maybe. There might be something coming through, like, the front window. I don't think that window's fully sealed properly possible uh yeah if you had rolled less than 80 you would have gone deaf for a minute f food chat for that poor scribe somewhere (laughs) he's not trained in physical resistance it's only people in his more immediate vicinity who have to roll. I but, like uh, to imagine that the echo gives him a migraine for the rest of the day. Maybe. I'm guessing the other frost collie in the room just shrug it off. I mean, it was a powerful effect. Like, they all pass, but they all shut the fuck up after it happened because, uh, you know... Displays of such power are intimidating, even for higher level combatants. True. And you watch uh, someone dot hand for the first time, and you're like, "Oh shit!" He once, uh, once Mimir kind of finishes, he turns around and he looks at you all. He seems to nod with approval before he just kind of like begins shuffling out through the front door. Uh, I'm building on that. Give me a quick second. Sure. See sure. if I can earn this man's respect at all. Uh, I just did a fun little composure roll for fun, and I have to roll the dice again. Okay. Stone cold. Uh. Oh yeah, I haven't gotten in humanity yet, so two eighty. Okay. Uh, you look the most unshaken, unaffected by this of anyone else here. Maybe uh, he's already deaf. Well, actually, if you clench your teeth hard enough, you can actually prevent, uh, like, sound from hurting you too bad. Because hmm. the muscle that lines the top of your jaw is right next to your, uh, oh god, it's something canal, I can't remember the exact term for it ear it's not ear canal no Dang oh it. no it's one of Cameron's college words <laughs> it's a big complicated thing if it doesn't fit on the scrabble board don't tell Alex Just move <laughs> on. it does require you have 
stronger than normal jaw muscles. So, yeah. they have to so if you say a tripasta like a fucking savage. Uh, but yeah, that is the thing. Uh, but, you know, he looks at you all and he just, he nods with approval. And uh, he, you know, begins walking out. You can hear the sound of various metallic objects clinking in his uh, sack as he kind of begins leaving as some kind of battle-ready Santa. Amir really said, uh, if I can't sleep, nobody sleeps. <laughs> It doesn't take too long before uh, Ursula comes out readied, but as she kind of enters out into like the main hall, she looks around and she looks at Alexei and she's like, "Where's Mimir?" Uh, he has already begun heading out. If you are ready to go, I think uh, I think we should hurry. She nods and she begins heading out. It, by the time that she has come out, everyone else is more or less dispersed. The only one who sticks around is Soren, who doesn't say anything. He just kind of watches as uh, you all leave. And Nas gives a respectful nod before he leaves the room. That's Soren. Always a treat having a civil conversation with you all. And he waves as he leaves. I guess Mimir Prudy is louder than the, uh, which was the other one? Uh, that was Ray. Not. <laughs> one step further away from Sword. Do you think I could throw him off of this? Just a little. Honestly, he would probably survive the fall. Oh no, uh. You know what, that's fair. He's so loud he drop an avalanche on him. Been through that. Did not suggest. I will not throw him off, but... Probably best not to run, but... He just kind of, like, smiles at that and is like, I can't take, uh... Joking threats. Not much of a warrior. As you all finally leave the uh, the cave tunnel that leads into the castle, you see it's still lightly snowing from earlier. Uh, the town before you and its various like staggered levels looks very serene. It's very mute colors and it's a very somber affair, but the light snow kind of gives it a bit of levity and as you are kind of coming up, uh, you see Mimir is kind of puffing on a, uh, a pipe. And as he sees you all, he uh, takes one last big puff and then he shakes it out. Mm, he seems to like wipe out the inside of the, uh, the pipe with his thumb before putting it away which by the way super hot because he was just smoking out of it there was embers in it literally seconds ago um granted he does have like his gloves on so it probably stops but it's like that's something you don't do with a pipe right after you're done smoking with it normally it's also extremely cold up here in the mountains <laughs> It's just a hot rock. Oh, and Cameron, just so you're aware, I have a lot more HP. I don't remember if you were here for my level up. Oh, I don't think oh, so. Yeah. Yeah. No, you, you were not. A... How much HP do you have now? Well, I'm no Astrid, but I'm a little over halfway there at 590. That's pretty good. I figured I might need it. <laughs> Versus the dragons. <laughs> it's possible. If I can draw aggro, Sebastian... I can put you right in front of the dragon. Or maybe, maybe not that. <laughs> I can let you monster hunter and like I'll toss you onto the dragon. 
I mean, you can definitely do that. I will ride a dragon while trying to punch through its back scales into its spine. That sounds raw as hell. Yeah, let's just dragon dogma. This 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 boss fight that's coming up. Everyone's gonna just climb around on it. All the frost collier, all of you, just tossing y'all on it. Every time you throw, get thrown off, it's just ah, gotcha. <laughs> you just need to get a uh, of uh, a like organic version of um, your sword throw ability. Yeah, <laughs> your area attack is just tossing a bunch of people. Organic <laughs> ballistics. Yeah, uh, it's. <laughs> You know, we were wondering how to keep a dragon, like, grounded on the ground. You know, probably having, like, good 20 people on its back just all stabbing, like, different parts. I, I think it make it a little tough to fly. Just especially if you throw membranes. Yeah, you throw pe three people on the wings. Or you get uh, the organic ballistics and just go above it and just punch it into the ground. Yeah. Right between the shoulders. Might be a bit big for that, but irregardless. We head outside, and the mirror's there being a badass. Yeah. Once he all notices you, yeah, puts his pipe away and kind of strokes his his uh, facial hair, and he's like, "Well, I guess we better all be uh, moving on." Though uh, I hope you don't mind giving me some time in town to uh, prep for a journey. I wanted to get some warm food before we go. Oh, perfect. And you can do that while I'm getting ready. Anything you uh, want? Ah, no, no, no. I've got it managed. No worries. Alright. Brief preparation before journey. And Finwood is going to go follow his nose for some good food. Uh, before you guys head out, Ursa kind of comes up to you, Alexi, and she says... Your friends need to speak with to Mamir with much more respect than that. Sirs and such. He's a man of many years and definitely earned his status. Gotta look over to Mamir and looks back at Ursula and it's like You're right. He does deserve a large respect. But I don't think he is as uh, offended by this as you are. I think he recognizes, uh, well, everyone here. That's not the point. You have to keep your honorifics, otherwise we just turn into barbarians. Perfect. I will keep that in mind. He nods. She huffs a little unconvinced, but she continues on. As uh, you make your way into town, Finn with you following your nose, and you find some nice baklava and other types of, uh, you know, popular northern Germanic dishes. Uh, for any who follow Mumir, he heads to, like, the blacksmithing quarter. And when he gets to one shop, he'll just uh, open up his sack and he pulls out some ornate piece of armor or some metal bit. And it looks very well decorated, very well, uh, like, uh, it looks very expensive, to say the least. Uh, does he go to the blacksmith, our good old blacksmith friend, or to someone else? Eventually, but uh, you see that he's like trading in, in. It seems like he's trading treasure for just massive amounts of armor and weapons. Hmm. And uh, you see that he gets a cart, and. When he gets the cart, he kind of brings the, the whole wagon with him. No Horace, just pulling it himself into, like, the quarter. And you just start seeing various blacksmiths of all varieties just dumping pieces of armor into this wagon. He 
he even comes by uh poor poor Baldi. Baldi, that's right. Uh in which uh Sebastian will make sure that Valdi knows like he's with us. <laughs> so he's just even more like, what the fuck is wrong with you people? Yeah. No, what makes it worse is we're back. We gave him a spear and got no money for it. Now he thinks we're back to collect. Oh no. <laughs> but then he just gets handed treasure and he's just like <sighs> And he just starts he just goes and follows suit and he just like looks at you all the whole time and it is and like... looks trotting up with like arms full of food for everyone except the Nas because he's a freak of nature. Oh, oh just... yeah, they have yet they should this, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> Uh, is, a uh, tea is available in the, in the town, right? No tea. Oh, shame. They can't okay. grow tea here. What are you talking about? I don't know how tea works. You just put some leaves <laughs> in a bag, dude. You, where do you get fucking leaves here? Oh, well. <laughs> he offers out some to her Safeway. <laughs> you put some pines in a bag. <laughs> ah, yes, delicious, delicious pine tea. <laughs> That's not awful. It's actually a Native American specialty up here oh. in the Northwest. I'm sure it's more than just pine needles. Yeah, probably. Yeah, it's, it's, it's mostly pine needles. Okay. Yeah, pine needles and uh, pine nuts are actually used in a lot of stuff. Pine uh, nuts, I can see. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm not saying they aren't. I'm saying yeah, they're yeah. not used anyway. exclusively. I hate when they're used as, like, decoration, but it's on the food and you don't realize it and you start eating it by accident. <laughs> Yeah. That seems like a you problem. <laughs> Listen, sometimes you eat some It should garnishes. be on top of the food, though. Oh my god. Anyway, your food is yes. doled out, and uh, Ursula, and despite him saying he didn't need any, uh, he still does offer a share to Mimir. Uh, he, he just nods, and he's just like... Whoa. It's a smaller portion, so... He just nods, and he's like, thank you. He just eats it. it it seems like he barely even chews straight up just it goes in the mouth and a few chews later he swallows it and then just does it until it's gone Ursula is a bit more refined and you know she'll take it she bows respectfully and she says thank you for your generosity before she begins eating it welcome This he is looks gonna be a long trip. <laughs> she... Listen, food is the way to heart, alright? They'll bribe everyone with food. Also, because if they say no, it just means he has more shares and he offered it first. Fair. Her composure is enough to hide her malcontentedness. But, uh, with everything done, uh, Mimir pulls out from that same sack like a large tarp and throws it up over the uh, throws it up over everything and his bag is almost empty at this point and he just nods to himself and he, he drops the rest of the bag in with everything and he ties everything down he's like alright if this doesn't get those uh, beastmen interested I don't know what will And he grabs the the girdle that you'd put like the horse in for the wagon. And he huffs and with a bit of exertion he like the the wagon tilts to its even even kelter and he begins dragging it along with him. Leans over to Alexis, should we Purchase a horse? Uh, after seeing what he has spent and is rather formidable strength, I don't know if that is the idea or if he plans to get it at the gate. He could eat a horse. I would we need one. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> 
This guy has the physical resistance of four horses, and probably more fatigue. If he needs to switch off, Finwith is here. But yeah, uh, he just begins dragging the cart along, and you'll eventually begin to uh, leave the gates of Hidalsai and then begin taking the mountain route out around to Molenheim. Now, the fun part for Anas, if he's going to find a way to feed discreetly, or if he's actually going to admit up front to these two monster hunters that they've got a bloodsucker in their midst. Dude, his little prank. Listen, you and I are both kind of in that uh, wheelhouse, and, you know, we do have tents, so it's fine. Benwith can always cut a palm. You'll be alright. Alexei does stop this, uh, my mirror. So, is the armor a piece of ring of sorts? What? No. The schooling aren't no fools. They're not gonna go and attack a bunch of random travelers, especially ones as well armed as we are. But, if we, uh, make it more tempting for them, you know, I think they'll be more likely to come and attack. From what I've heard, they suffered a terrible defeat to the uh, clans about over a couple years ago or so now, I think, at this point. And they must be hurting for resources, armor, food, weapons. So something like this would be too tempting for them to miss. Definitely shows your wisdom, because honestly, I wouldn't have thought of that. <laughs> oh, men of my age can only do one thing, and that's talk, or do things the young ones don't remember. He kind of huffs, and he, he's like, oh, all right, one second, he stops, and he kind of stretches a bit. It seems to be quite tough work. The man's carrying probably, like, a ton and a half of metal in this wagon. True. Probably move quick if we, uh, switch off. No, no. I'm old and don't fight as good as I used to. There's no point in you tying yourself out in case we get attacked. So it just kind of chuckles to himself. He does kind of, like, look to Alexi, though, with, like, a lean of a head, like, ick. <laughs> Give me for a second. Alexi obliges. And, like, he kind of, like, turns in some and just in a lower voice is like, So, uh, when should we, uh, have, I mean, further from town, yes, but we wanted to go ahead and let know. Oh, do proper interactions, yes? Mm-hmm. He knows. Uh, could do so now, I suppose. Unless you mm -hmm. feel more comfortable a little bit later. Probably further down the path. Uh, more likely to run into merchants or uh, other travelers. Alright, very well. Uh, at least for the path we're walking, um, Sebastian is going to walk until the snow gets a little too high. He will start using psychokinesis the moment it becomes difficult to walk. It's not like he gives a shit. No. Well, your your comrades don't notice, at least, or your new, uh, new comrades don't notice, at least, because Ursula tends to walk more up front, and Mamira's dragging the wagon, so... Unless you go out of your way to be up in front, not really. He's he's more near the middle of any group. At least he uh, enough space where he can analyze the situation if need be. Uh, 
as you all continue along and uh, you know mirror stops every once in a while to give a good stretch and you know take a quick break ursula eventually against her normal judgment speaks up and she's like wolf why do you insist on carrying that yourself especially when there are other you know methods why don't you get a horse in town i know there were some and he just kind of cocks an eyebrow at her and he's just like what make ourselves look more appetizing to any passing by dragons they won't be interested in a cart full of bits of metals and spiky things paid for men not for beasts And she nods and she's like, I'm sorry I questioned your wisdom. And he's just like, no, no, no. You take yourself too seriously. That's a good question. Not everyone can do this kind of stuff. But we're for Scalia as he uh, takes another puff from his pipe on his break. Hope this man stocked enough tobacco to last into the grave. Oh, I suppose, uh, due to the comfort of the group, uh, we wanted to do some proper introductions, since we are on this break anyway. And Ursa is just like, I believe that's appropriate, and Mamir just kind of chuckles to himself. And he's like, all right. Tell us about your merry band here, Roscalier. <laughs> oh no, you're supposed to be a um, great warrior. I mean, just a shout alone. Uh, what is um, full name? Title? Mm, he thinks about it for a moment. Hmm. And the GM pulls up his notes because all their last names are <laughs> fucking hard. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> I remember. Suffer, Cameron. Suffer for my amusement. And notes. I at least have family that helps me with this. Oh, God, well, great news. Just... I'm never going to say his last name. <laughs> okay, I'm just sleep with that. Part two, electric boogaloo. Mm, he's just like. What? Well, I'm not anyone anymore. My heydays are gone. Just another uh, old wolf, they call me. Too stubborn to die. But I guess it's all fair and it's custom in southern lands. My name is Mamir Skjel Dulavisan. Benut Gelenson. Like looks to Sebastian, waiting for Sebastian. Nothing happens. <laughs> On the Saucier Sorbonne. Sebastian Finch. Then with looks to Ursula. Ursula Winka of Clan Winka. Alexi Frey, from Clan Frey. Good, good. Now, you were going to tell us about the uh, oddities of your companions here, right? Sebastian is already, like, still. He's floating an inch above the snow. <laughs> oh, uh, Sebastian, uh, go a bit higher. This <laughs> raises, like, a foot or two. Ursula is noticing now, and she's like, Mamiya doesn't seem to, uh... Yeah, moves things with mind. That I can. I don't personally understand it, but it has proven very useful for quite a few battles, and even outside battle. 
as well I'm a master in battlefield tactics. Oh, he seems honestly surprised at that and he nods and Alright, so it's just like She looks very off put. Oh wait. And He Mamir like eyes around and he kinda looks at uh Ursula and he uh takes another puff from his pipe and he says uh, I'm sure your uh, compatriots come from all different places and peoples and well it's good of you to go ahead and bring that up to us uh, I don't think you need to worry too much Roscoe here yeah. Uh, that's what I thought as well. But it is for the comfort of them, to be fair. Uh, <laughs> it looks to an awesome smile, like, how much are you willing to go into it? I mean, they're gonna find out sooner or later. We got three months on the road with these people. <laughs> Listen, even if Mimir knows, Ursula is still gonna have to go through a couple phases here. Mimir kind of, like, lets out a breath and he says, uh... He points, or he motions over to Anastasia, and he says, Spotted. <laughs> Do I know that the... one isn't human. He hasn't let out a puff of hot air since we started on this trek. Oh, yeah. No, Ooh, someone's, not... someone's got a he crack notice, huh? <laughs> he just scratches the <laughs> Anastasia reluctantly takes off the helmet. <laughs> You'd be correct. <laughs> he Any just paused though, else? and he kind of goes, "Shit, no one's ever noticed that before." <laughs> Why is that ever? We all we have only been in cold places. Well, besides um, Gabriel, this was one. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. I've been around my fair share of individuals of all kinds. Many Have of, uh... Have you met Vitello before? I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. I believe the common phrase you call us now is vampires? Hmm. I've met some in my day, I have. Killed them all, of course. Crib. No, so I'll say shrugs. <laughs> yeah, Finn with that, goes, they're kind of, um, uh, phrase, mixed, uh, mixed bag. I believe all kinds of people are. Isn't that right, schooling? Uh, he kind of just <laughs> scratches, but he nods. Every time it gets mentioned around, if you had ears, they'd be drooping. Mm. And uh, Arisa looks and she looks very shocked. <laughs> she just doesn't and, look at him. Right at her. And he's just, he motions and he's like, ah, just like that. And he takes an air puff from his pipe. Well, it's not going to be a secret for long, so it really doesn't matter. Ursa seems to get more hostile for a moment, and Mamir just kind of looks at her, and he just says, Calm down, but it has such a tone and tenor to it that it instantly disarms her in the situation. And he says, <clears throat> I've fought your people before. You're not like many of them. Whether that's a good or a bad thing, I guess, is up to you. But I know you're not some mindless... Uh, power a hungry clansman just looking to slay and fight your next foe of course would not make a um, good son of a shaman ah I'd explain a lot of the fetishes on your body be nuts I can um, change skin hmm I've seen some of those kind
Well, if, if uh, cards gets too much, I can uh, make like your pelt. Actually, bigger than your pelt, I would imagine. Funnily enough. Oh, not that one. Not for too long. <laughs> Regular bear. <laughs> you thought a horse was a target? That one would have made it even worse. Uh, you know, turning into Kongspion would probably be a bad idea. No, no, it's okay. I may be old, but I can still do at least this much. You know. Plus, it's the senior's job to make sure that the young ones can fight more fit and proper. Anyway. He turns to Isla. If you couldn't figure out this much walking with this group for a few hours and you still got some years to go, don't go jump into conclusions. He pats her on the shoulder as he uh, gets up, empties out his pipe. If you want to talk more about it, we can do it on the road, but we keep walking. As he puts his pipe away and heaves the wagon and it shifts with a loud clanking before he begins slowly walking forward again. Oh, like he smiles at everybody. It's kind of like a, uh, see, I told you. <laughs> this still looks a little bit nervy, but nah, he's fine. He does kind of a... <laughs> Go ahead, Deers. Okay, well, uh... As they do start walking, though, he does eventually, like, chip up and... Uh, if you do have any questions, if it would make you feel better, um, I will answer, Sister Ursula, specifically, but... She, like, half turns to look at you, and she says... If the wolf doesn't see you as a threat, then neither will I. And she just I continues. figured you might want to know. Uh, Hunter and all. Dinots. Accepting it. She says, Your clansmen are not beasts. They die like any other man does. Any shrugs? opportunity to learn tricks to learn <laughs> but it's fine Anasa's response to Alexi's expression is just raise an eyebrow before putting the helmet on and then just do using weight elimination to stay above the snow um, so my food is ready if we want to take a break a little early I know we started late but Sure, sure. We're almost at the two hour mark now. Sounds good. Oh, okay. uh, we'll go ahead and take a, a quick 10 minute break, maybe 15 minutes, depending on you know what everyone's got going on. Uh, so we'll be back at 6.20, 9.20, you know, wherever you are. And uh, yeah, if you haven't done so already and you're enjoying this content, please follow if you're on Twitch or subscribe if you're on YouTube. To see more amazing content like this. Also, you can join us in our community at the Bad Luck Gamer official Discord. Down in the description or below on Twitch. And uh, I always recruit there for my games first. So you can come and uh, get a chance to possibly play with us in the future. So, with that, we're going to go ahead and take a quick 10 minute break. We'll be back. Alright, let me go get food and out.
It's your disadvantage. It's like one of your negative traits on CK2. We're back. It's been a minute. Apparently, Alex has been made a lord since uh, we went on break, unfortunately. Yeah, we had an extra long break because we had to attend his coronation. If you do anything to break channel rules, now you are both a, uh, you were going to be banned from my land, uh, criminal charges placed on you, and banned from the channel. So, my bans are going to have a little more weight to them. You don't know what plot in Scotland, but, uh, you make one wrong move. There is five feet in Scotland that you're not allowed on, I swear to god. You even step in there, I'm coming for you. This is the worst thing that ever happened to me. I'm so proud. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, the first person I'll probably ever hire will be Alex. And now I'm regretting that choice. In the contract, you must refer to me to request work as <clears throat> Lord Royston. You will have to do this. I will sign all the checks to Good. Lord Royston. Good. And then that's, he won't be able to cash them. I will have to explain it to <laughs> <Yeah>. my bank. <laughs> You'll have to take the certificate in. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't hold legal standing here, but I believe that it is actually federally recognized, so... You know. You have that. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, uh, Anima, where you're definitely not a lord, and should never be allowed to play one. Next, next, uh, campaign. If you have to ever attend court as a speeding ticket, make sure they refer to you as Lord Royston. <laughs> We'll see what I can do. <laughs> They're like, all right, so uh, why should, should we not situation. let it's him be on jury duty? Uh, my name is Lord Royston. Actually, get him out of here. It depends, yeah, how cheeky I feel. I guess depending on the judge, it will either lighten the mood or make it worse. <laughs> probably the former. Or the latter. Yeah, probably the latter, honestly. Probably going to get a lecture. So now that Best Boy has been proclaimed to the entire group, is he shifting into another form for snow travel? Not immediately. If he does it at night and just doesn't drop it come morning, I mean that's not his fault. He forgets. He normally he spends so much time in shapes, you know? The real question is, to fly, to bear. If I bear, I get two bear damage. Bear damage. Also, Alex, do you have like something on your camera? Do I? Was, like, you a got weird, a little like, light glare sponge. Effect. It's been that, there for a long time. So that is straight up my lighting setup. It's it's. I have one is of those it... lights that's three light bulbs like in one thing. It, it is it is my light. So it's just shooting a beam straight onto your camera. Yeah, actually. There's a light bulb facing There's a my beam window. on the camera and a beam on the curtains. Can you not bend those? Normally they can move slightly. No, the, the, not the light, at least. The only way I could do it, and it was something I was considering, is, like, scooting around my computer. Would you like well, to yeah, lightly do, do take something... the bulb and just... Whoop. Do something real quick. Just, like, stand up next to your camera and, like, just slightly cover it, like, from the top. Yeah, it's just a. Yeah. It's just a, a light beam, man. That's a unfortunate. Video. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll. I can. I was already planning on moving my desk around, like rearranging it slightly, so I could do that. Uh, it's, it's not bad. I, it's been there for yeah. a long time now. True. It's been there since like uh, I, I changed all my light bulbs, but I, I need that light facing me because uh, otherwise my room's too dark, and I do a lot of like my miniature work at my desk. I need good light. So I can see what the fuck I'm doing. So I have the same kind of thing. I just I put like a piece of paper and I just like angled it. Oh god. No, no. My computer just spray started for no reason. My computer just spray started for no reason.